How's that everybody? Welcome back to the Rocky Fern. My name is Luca and I have OI Type 4. Uh, today we're just going to be doing a simple repot of a few plants and discuss kind of the direction I want to take the channel. So let's get into it. Alright, so today we're going to be doing a repot on this Stiffenbachia crocodile. I freaking love this plant. Uh, we're going to be doing a repot on this Matucana cactus, which I really like this cactus. Um, I think it's a gorgeous cactus. Um, the echeverias in there, they are seedlings that have been growing. They're coming out. The crassulus are staying. Um, this is Sully. Sully's going to get a replant. This is a Echo Echinocactus grandis enormous. And, uh, or engine, sorry, not enormous, engines. It has that beautiful purple banding. And then the totem pole is getting a repot today as well. So, let's go. All right, let's start the video off by transplanting these beautiful monkeys. Um, these are Echeveria, or Echeveria, depending on who you want to irritate that day. Uh, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven transplants today. I'm going to leave the Sinocrassulas in, um, but we're going to take these out. So let's see. Let's. We're going to use these two-inch pots, and I've pre-cut some screen that we're going to put in the bottom. But what I want to do is kind of take these out first. Um, the only problem is the, the the plants that have a bunch of this, you know, the trichomes on it, the downy dust. I hate touching them because it leaves fingerprints. Um, but it is what it is. So. Let's see, this is a pretty sandy mix I use and hopefully they'll be able to come out pretty readily. Nice, ooh, that's pretty. How's that, nice little root, ooh, how's that? Nice little root ball, let's see. How's that nice little root ball? So there's one. Okay, and then let's get this guy out of here. Two. Oh, shoot. Three. I'm trying not to disturb the Sinocrassulas, but I am. That's a twofer. Let's we'll see if we can transplant him again. All right, let's get this guy out. Oh yeah, I'm glad I'm doing this now because we're already disturbing the Sinocrassulas and I kind of wanted to leave them be, but they all have really good root structures here, which is awesome. You know what, since we're here, we might as well move these guys. Just a little further into his own corner here. So, as you guys have probably noticed, I try to post every Monday and Friday um, with special videos happening on Wednesdays. So, I'm going to stick to that schedule for now and hopefully it works out well. Um, I'm at 170 subscribers, which actually I'm pretty darn impressed with for, for my little channel. So the goal is, my incentive to you guys for subscribing is at the 200 subscriber mark, I'm gonna do either a full house plant tour, which I have over 600 plants. That's right, 600, I have a disease. Or, um, and or I'll do a bunch of tours of our local botanical gardens, the Muir, Muir M-U-I-R, um, Desert Botanical Gardens down in Poipu is awesome. Um, so that's a, that's a plan. And then of course I want to do giveaways, but I, I want to do giveaways that um, are going to be appreciated by a pretty significant audience. So maybe at the 
500 subscriber mark, we'll start the giveaways. And I have some variegated um, Monstera Avansonii that I want to do. I have some, uh, actually I have a lot of stuff um, that I would like to give away. A ton of Hoyas, I have over 100 Hoya. Maybe, I don't know, down the line we could even talk about the philodendron red moon because that plant should be in everybody's house i love that philodendron um, okay so we're going to tap these sinocrasilis down and give them a chance to recover but i think they'll be much happier um, running solo in here so you'll have to forgive me because i have a new filming location and i don't think it's the best for self-filming so we'll try this video and see what happens hopefully it's all in focus okay next plant let's go with smallest to biggest okay and i'm tr and i'm gonna split these guys up Ooh, just like that so easy why stress okay so we're gonna take this two inch pot throw in a screen and it's a very rocky self uh free draining mix and I really like this mix and we're gonna throw in I think this big guy here break it up just a little so the roots are a little easier to manage maybe clean up while we're in here if he'll come free yeah okay there's another one that can come off and ideally what I want to do is place the crown right at the rim of the pot and I think that will do it. I'm gonna also put in some of the mycorrhizal inoculant because I believe it helps a lot with succulents. And, all right, grab some more mix here. So they're all gonna go pretty much just like that, but let's see if I need to firm this in at all. Oops. Maybe grab this bonsai jack chopstick that I adore. I have three of them because he's that company is very giving and awesome. But there we are. That's the first one. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in there shoot and i'm gonna grab a little paintbrush brush the leaves off the farina that's on here comes off pretty readily but this paintbrush is pretty soft so it's minimal damage and just kind of tap around to get those roots settled all right there's that do the next one and I'll probably just get real quiet and speed through these maybe not maybe you guys want to hear me talk I have no idea um, any comments on how you think the channel could be better I would really appreciate it uh, I kind of think the channels it's not a very dedicated subject matter in my channel because I'm a very eclectic dude I like pretty much anything and every one um, and by that I mean I'm a hunter I'm a diver I'm a woodworker I'm a father I love my plants I love my corals I love my animals I'm a big reptile guy um, I love it all so I kind of wanted to create a channel that represented the same interests that I have and at the same time kind of represent my OI now, that's something I should probably talk about, isn't it? What is OI? Okay, so OI is osteogenesis imperfecta, meaning it's a congenital disease. I was born with it, it's hereditary. My youngest has it, my dad had it. And it's a um, malformation of a certain type of collagen. And so that gives us kind of the common name of brittle bone disease. I've had about 40 breaks. 
Okay, so how to change the battery. And what was I saying? Um, I, by the way, I finished, I finished the second one. Uh, where the heck am I? Right here. Okay, so what was I saying? I was saying osteogenesis imperfecta. Yeah, so it's a congenital disease. I was born with it. That's what congenital means, hello. And unfortunately, um, I didn't find out what it was until after we had my boys. Not sure how that would affect me having my boys, but you never know. Um, and actually, I had a hard time believing that I had osteogenesis imperfecta because I don't didn't know a lot about it. And it's one of the reasons why I introduced myself as type 4 OI because I want to represent the OI community and kind of bring awareness about this disease um, a little more in what small ways I can. And... Um, so yeah, I have type 4. It's a pretty mild form. Um, I grew up doing martial arts and kind of a heavy-handed father. And so I have like 40 breaks under my belt. Um, I recently just broke my wrist. Uh, but, you know, growing up, everyone else broke their fingers doing martial arts too. So it was kind of, it was kind of a big shock to me that I actually had OI. And we got that genetically tested, and that's kind of how we're so sure about it. Um, talking to my extended family, they're like, oh yeah, we know all about it. You, you know, they kind of already had their finger on the pulse, as it were. Um, but my youngest has had it. We've both suffered um, vertebrae fractures, um, compression fractures. He's 10, um, but he got that when he was a little bit younger than that, maybe six, I think. Um, so unfortunately, you know, he's had some broken bones, a broken foot, two broken arms. But what's funny is my oldest, who supposedly doesn't have the gene it, or the disease, doesn't carry it, he's broken his left arm three times, and that is the record. I have not broken my arm more than twice, well, any one bone more than twice. And he's done three times, so. It's something that we kind of own and, you know, um, talk about freely in our house. But that's what OI is. Um, I believe there's eight different types. And I joined an OI support group on Facebook. And it's kind of humbling because I read stories where people sneeze and break ribs and are wheelchair bound and have rods and plates to keep them keep them going and so more power to those guys you know um, I think you should live life and I think you should do what you want and so I'm I'm a proud person who has OI because without it I wouldn't be who I am and and whatnot but it's a disease that it's not very well known um, if anyone has seen that Bruce Willis movie glass or unbreakable um, Samuel L. Jackson's character suffers from it. He's wheelchair bound. So, pretty interesting. It also comes with some dental defects. I have a sister diagnosis of detinogenesis, or DI, and that means that the dentine, the pulp portion of your tooth, is also uh, malformed. And so I do have uh, I don't get cavities, but my teeth crack and break and shear off at these crazy angles, just like my hands. So, pretty interesting. Uh, but you'll hear me say, my name's Luca and I have OI Type 4 pretty much at every intro because I really want to bring awareness to the disease and maybe even help people who are newly diagnosed or families with those who are newly diagnosed show that you can you can live life you know unfortunately for me I do have a mild form of it but I still have my issues um, part of the issues you can get with OI are severe cramps and uh, like I said I have over 40 breaks in my life I also am hyper flexible so I've had about six to eight dislocations on my shoulders full dislocations um, and the only reason I bring that up is because the cramps that I'm talking about, the pain level, with all the breaks and whatnot, they're a 10 for me. And, you know, I have thigh cramps that feel like 
it's going to snap my femur. Um, I instantly go into a, a sweat, like my shirt is soaked just from the sheer pain. Um, I remember one time I was getting out of the car after work and my quads locked up. So I kind of, my legs kind of kicked straight and then my hands locked up. So they kind of pulled back. So I <laughs> had to call my family at the time and say, hey, I'm outside stuck up against the car because <laughs> if I move, well, I'm gonna catch a cramp that's gonna knock me over. And they're pretty powerful cramps in the sense that if you get them in your hands, it's gonna sit you down against your will. And if you get them in your quads, you're gonna, your legs are gonna kick out straight. So it's, it's kind of bizarre, actually. Um, I have a funny story with my best friend, my diving buddy, one of my diving buddies, I should say, one of my best friends. I'm, Lucky to have several. Um, but Brynan, the original Aquaman, he, I had to call him one time to rescue me. I was out hunting and I wanted to really check out this new area and just was a dummy about it. I didn't refill up on my water. I didn't, I didn't do much. And so on the way back from a pretty sure place that we call hell, and it's hell to get in, but it's, we were addicted to it. It, um, I ended up catching cramps so bad that I was on my butt, just kind of inching my way up the mountain and it started raining and I was kind of in this overhang and I figured I was gonna spend the night there. So I figured why not call and just let someone know where I was. So I call him and he's like, where are you? And I try to be nonchalant about it. I'm like, oh, I'm stuck on the mountain. So anyway, long story short, that guy, along with his beautiful wife, my sister, um, Felicia, who has an awesome channel. I'll link her channel in the description. She sent him to me and they rescued me and brought me Gatorade and water. And it was amazing. And as soon as I drank my legs, I could feel them release and it was great. It was an awesome trip. So anyway, there's that. All right, we got one more to do. And this is, this particular plant has a, another seedling that sprouted after I transplanted them, which I think is interesting. And so it has a little sister bud here, which I'm just gonna leave. It's not worth getting them all ripped apart at that such a young age. And what's cool about these Echeveria, they kind of look like Conte to me because they, they start out this kind of nice bluish green color, but then they get that farina and they turn a really white, blue, purple color. And if it is the Conte variety, it's gonna get really big leaves. And I mean like 12 inch long leaves, really nice big leaves. And if this is not in focus, guys, I am going to lose it. No, I'm just kidding. It would be cruddy for you guys because what a horrible video to watch. What's funny about the cramps, by the way, is they only seem to happen in the heat, which everyone probably is like, duh. But I never have gotten them while I've been in Utah, only here in Hawaii. Anyway, so we have two, four, six, seven of these echeverias that are now transplanted. And I'm gonna keep them inside for now under some really nice light. And we'll move on to probably the Matukana because why not? We'll go small to big. Yeah, that's why. See, there's a method to my madness. So Matukana, this is Matukana Madisonorium. And I, I love Matukana, not only for the really cool um, design and, and look of the plant, and that kind of that is so cool. That looks like a like a gymnocalisium that's you know no spines and a nervous ver ver version or a lophophora or just ah, I love them. But they have really cool blossoms. I mean, some of the coolest blossoms that a cactus could have. And I can't tell you enough how much I freaking love this cactus. So um, when I got it, it was actually probably a third smaller than this. And I think this two inch pots just a little too small. So we are gonna go with another two inch pot that's just a little bit bigger. 
So these actually might be one inch pots, one and a half inch terracottas. What's interesting is I'm gonna go from terracotta to plastic. And so watering, I'm gonna to have to be, I'm gonna to have to make sure I know what I'm doing. Actually, you know what, maybe I won't do plastic. I think what I'll do is another terracotta. This is gonna be a three and a half inch terracotta. But uh, that's quite a big jump actually. I'm gonna do it, and I'm only gonna feel comfortable doing it because my mix is so porous. Um, otherwise, you run the risk of killing your plant. And the reason why that is, why you don't wanna up pot too big, is because most medium are pretty water retentive. Um, most soil substrates, soil in itself is pretty water retentive, so the more you have, the more water can hold on to. Even in a porous uh, vessel like a terracotta it can have a hard time drying out so just keep that in mind but I think we're going to be okay so what I'm going to do is come through the bottom I'm going to push it out Oop, if it will let me okay there it goes Ooh, look at that now while you're in here check for a root mealy check for all kinds of stuff, but you can see that my mix is freely falling away, and that's a good thing. That means it's a nice rocky, porous mix. Yeah, matukana. Ugh. I've got some more matukana coming, and I wish I had a whole bunch more. I, I really like them. I really do. If it's something that you guys haven't had yet, the matukana genus, do it. Especially if you're just new into succulents. It's such an easy-going plant. And I do the, the little squeeze test on my cactus. If it is a little bit soft, I think it needs a watering. Of course, you're gonna have to do some other cues like the roots and kind of timing and see when the last time it was you watered. But uh, anytime this guy's just a little bit soft, I water him and he plops up super hard. Um, I don't water to the point where he explodes. Um, so he, he won't get a water for quite a while, but it is, uh, it is a kind of a good way to check. And yes, I do reuse my mix. Um, if there's anything wrong with it, like if it had root mealy, I wouldn't reuse it. But because this plant doesn't have any root mealy, I am fine reusing it. So I'm gonna hold this plant here, kind of twist it around so that the substrate can go in between the, the roots that I opened up and then kind of knock it around, kind of really settle it in around the roots. And I'll top dress these afterward, uh, but I will be top dressing with just a clay. Um, because I like the way that looks. And the clay actually acts like, it's not an Akadama clay, but it's a very similar clay. It does several things um, besides what a normal top dressing will do, but it does give nutrients to the plant, holds on to moisture, kind of on a, on a smaller level, microscopic level, and that's, that's good for the, um, for the cactus or pretty much any plant that might be sending out roots. But that's the Matukana, like I said. I want it to be a little bit more firmed in. And you know what I forgot to do is to give everyone the fertilizer. So let me hurry in. I like the slow release fertilizer, not too much for cactus or succulents really. They, uh, they don't tend to be heavy feeders. Okay, and then one thing I do on my name tags now is I cut them at an angle because my mix is so porous that it's hard to get the squared edges in to the pot. Okay, that's looking really good. So, there it is, nice and transplanted, up potted, and this is gonna last it for, for years. Long, long time, so there's that guy. We'll put him to the side. Then we have the totem pole cactus, also known as um, Lophoceris, or Lophoceris, Shodii, various monstros, or the totem. And this guy really hasn't grown much for me, but I've noticed the roots have actually started to come out the bottom, so it does need a 
trans uh, knot pot here and I'm gonna be going to pretty big one I'm gonna be going to this guy here so again if my mix wasn't so porous I'd be a little worried but because it is really rocky really porous it should be fine but let's check out these roots here Oh boy. So, like I was saying, if you guys have any suggestions for me on what you want to see, if I could be a better presenter, anything like that. Um, I watch myself and there's just so many critiques I could give myself, you know, so I don't know what direction to go to. And the only reason I'm asking is if it's something obvious, you know, have a constantly have a bugger on my nose just pick the damn thing you know okay shoot he does not oh there he goes he just gave let's see oh wow look at those roots yeah he's he's pretty happy i think let's see you know, i tore a little bit of the roots shoot okay well it is what it is so what we'll do is we'll try to loosen him up too, not too much. I know Cactus Mania, he does the, um, he breaks apart the roots and then he also um, kind of taps in the, the new substrate so that the roots can get in between the, or the substrate can get in between the roots. Um, I've tried it, I like it. I also like the tap method a lot, so I try to do both. Um, now, after, I done, after I'm done transplanting, I won't water these cactus for 10, 12, 14 days. Um, I try to plant it so that they get a nice drink and then they dry out and then I'll transplant them. It is springtime, so they're in active growth. We've had a ton of water rain lately though, um, a ton of rain. It's like every day this winter has rained and we're we're past winter but it doesn't seem like it i still don't feel like we're in spring um, and that's because any damage that i'm doing right now with these roots any open roots any tears anything that you want to give them a chance to dry and callus and heal without introducing moisture because they don't have a very good way of dealing with infection when it comes to moist roots so like I said, you're going to want to let them dry out. But that's a really good looking root ball, man. Jeez. And this was my old mix. Um, I can tell because it has a little bit more finer material in it. And I like a more porous, grittier mix now. But this is looking really good. You guys can tell me what you think. Um, yeah, I am excited to do a full house tour. I really want to do it, but it's such a, so many plants that I really kind of want to incentivize people, you know, incentivize myself. So yeah, I think once we get to five, 200 subscribers, just 30 more, I'll do a big, big tour. And then keep watching because I'm, we've got a bunch of botanical gardens here. We're kind of lucky that way. And uh, I want to do some tours on them. I'm going to back out just a little here since it's such a big plant. And let's put this guy in. Obviously, he's going to sit probably like that, I think. Do the old shaker shaker. Mix in some of the old shaker shaker. Um, this mix has pumice, some of that clay, some homemade compost, which, you know, if you're like me, your homemade compost is the shit. It's probably the best thing you've better than anyone else's. I feel like anytime I talk to someone who's serious about compost, that's kind of like the feeling we have. It's like homemade brew. 
of any kind, homemade wine, homemade beer. It's the shit. I'll do a video here too on my compost because that thing is a freaking machine. Honestly, I could, I could throw a whole body, you heard me, and it would chew it up. So, kind of cool. And in my compost, I throw everything. Meat, cheese, grease, bones. I find it funny when you have a compost that says, don't add this, don't add that. Uh, why not? Had great results. So anyway, that was pretty simple. Let me just kind of knock it in a little bit more. Get this in. I think this old stuff had laterite in it. I took down some aquariums that I had some planted aquariums and had a whole bunch of laterite, maybe 100 pounds worth. And so I used that because that's a clay material and it's great. Uh, but anyway, so there's my totem. And then we'll put it in. That's the Lophocereus shoddy eye. Shoddy. Okay. Looking pretty good. I like it. Hoping to start putting on some major growth this year. Oh, I almost did it again. Fertilizer. You get some fertilizer. You get some fertilizer. Maybe we can do a Q&A too. I kind of feel weird talking about myself in a Q&A, but I think anybody would. But if there's anything you guys want to know, you can ask me now. I'm sure I'll answer it. Pretty open. Um, now we have a Sully. This is my beautiful, beautiful Sully. And I'm a little concerned with him. This is an Aquino Cactus Grandis Engines. And that's the money shot. Let me get up close and show you guys what I'm talking about. I mean, look at that. Isn't that thing amazing? <sighs> I don't name most of my plants. I think I have like three or four, maybe. Maybe. And this is one of them. Sully because he's purple and blue and green. And he reminded me of uh, Monsters, Inc. Sully. And he has a little bit of a gecko turd on him. I tend to leave gecko turds on there and the null turds because I feel like it's kind of a cheap way of fertilizing my plants. Whether they absorb it through the dermal tissue or not, I'm not sure. But now, how are we gonna get this guy out? Okay, so many things going on. Card ran out, I had to replace the card. I got some nice cardboard straps here. Actually, they're just paper bag straps. Uh, but I think this will work. Please work. Alright, so like I was saying, Sully is beautiful, but he is pokey. This new pot should be enough to keep him happy for a while. You know what, since you're already there, bud, I'm just gonna push you out this way. Oh, nice. Oh, Look at them roots. Look at that root horn. I have no idea what I say sometimes, guys. I mean, I do, because let's be fair. Uh, why I say it, that's a whole other question, isn't it? Okay, so, yeah, really nice. Taking this. Yeah, I really like Sully. He's probably one of my top five favorite cactus so funny because my sons they ask me all the time dad what's your favorite plant i can't answer it. it i just can't i it's whatever one i'm looking at you know what i mean anyone else have that issue um with that being said i definitely have my least favorites um oh you know it sucks i just lost my mapu palm that that's a hard blow i'll tell you what that i don't even want to talk about it i'll talk about it yeah, the mapu palm, man, that was, it just rotted out on me. That's the slowest growing plant ever. I watched Sean, um, I can't remember his YouTube channel right now. I'll put it in the description. I really like watching him. He's from Jakarta. He uh, talks about his Discadia jade dragon, green dragon, jade, something like that, being the slowest growing plant he knows. I 
have one and in like a month it's put out five new growth points that freaking mapu palm i've had for almost a year and it had one new leaf growing yeah one new leaf in the whole year and then it decided to rot out on me so i'm gonna have to get a replacement for that 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 sucks i really really like mapu palms i really do okay so you know what guys i don't see any any pests so this is this is awesome and then I'll also check up here for any any weirdness going on there's some weird scale thing I don't know what's going on there but it's good and you know what's kind of cool is this has a tap root I didn't know a kino cactus had tap roots but it has a little tap root going not, a, not necessarily caduciform codex forming because I don't think these are codiciforms but it's similar to a codex it's just a big old fat tap root all right let's get this guy so yeah throw that in and you know what I'm gonna do let me smart about it here times we're cooking on all cylinders there okay all right now let's get serious because sully bites and i love sully but he's a biter okay Ooh, almost got me almost got me in some of my earlier youtube videos you can see us catching rattlesnakes and um i kind of feel like some of these plants are hot we use that term hot in herpetology for anything venomous and uh, the only reason I say that is because getting poked by Sully it would hurt it really would hurt and I don't want to do it don't do it maybe I'll put a question out here in this video what started you what plant started your plant journey and when um, I can answer that. I guess I'll say I'll start off. I was in third grade and I had a, ooh, monkey. I had a um, teacher that gave me a spider plant, um, daughter plant in a red Dixie cup. And I freaking loved that plant. Um, even before then though, we had a leaky faucet outside from the hose, you know, and every spring and summer it would grow this, such a cool little ecosystem. I had, it would like pull up in the grass and I would have uh, those aquatic red mites and mosquito larva and uh, swimming beetles and so, and, and oarsmen. So I would always just stare at that for hours, man. I mean, I was, I was that kid. And uh, that's kind of what got me on my plant journey. And then I've always loved cactus and the ecology of an area, all the interconnected ecosystems. So that got me going. And then as I got older, I started collecting more, mostly common ones because before COVID, a lot of these plants you know, not, not there wasn't a big drive for them. I mean, you had your conophytums and your pothos or your epipremnums, epipremnums, monsteras. But I feel like COVID and the pandemic really kind of gave life to an industry. Um, that's just my opinion. I definitely could be wrong. Your raphidophora, tetraspermas, you know. But I will say, my mom passed in 2020, and after that, um, I started woodworking, which was an awesome thing to do. I started collecting plants, and uh, or, or growing my collection, I should say, and it's been awesome. Plants just do something for you that I think a lot of other things can't do. They connect you and ground you and all kinds of good stuff but there's Sully in his his or her brand new pot 
I'll have to ask the boys what they think he is or she is. I keep calling him a he, so is he, you know, so he's a boy. Not that it matters. I do think most cactus are dioecious, and uh, meaning they have both male and female plants, or male and female um, parts to their flower. And I do believe most cactus need to be, are not able to self-fertilize, so. I have found a few of my plants. Um, I know Lophophora is able to self-fertilize, and I know that, oh, what am I doing? I'm putting mycorrhizal inoculant, which won't work unless it's in contact with the roots. I was trying to fertilize, guys, okay? Don't ever let me tell you I can multitask. Um, I know Lophophora can self-fertilize. I know uh, Copiapoa tenuous can, unless it's a hybrid because it set seed for me today. I know Parodia or Notocactus Hasselbergii can because it set seed for me. Um, and I did not fertilize that. And we, to my knowledge, didn't have any other plants or any other cactus that were blooming. So we'll see, it's kind of cool. You know, I was a little hesitant with him, but I don't know why. He did really well. Thanks for not biting me as I sink a spine into my finger at the last minute. That's how you do it, guys. Okay, so he's done. And now, Let's do the Diffenbachia crocodile. He is a relatively new acquisition for me, he or she. This beautiful Diffenbachia, let me zoom out because you need to. And Diffenbachias, man, you can, I just, I love this one. The leaf color on it is amazing and the crocodile portion is the app axial portion or the back side of the leaf you have this kind of wavy texture to it along the main vein of the leaf and it is such a cool cool structure and this step in bakia kind of grows longer um lancelet type leaves as opposed to a lot of dip and bakia get kind of a kind of a really big shoulder on them kind of a real wide point to them um, Defenbachia do really well here in Hawaii. Um, there's some at my um, ex-in-law's place that um, is taller than I am. So again, I'm six feet tall. I say that every time. I'm five foot two, you guys. But still yet, yeah, five foot two Defenbachia is a huge plant. Um, yeah, they're huge. Um, and they, they grow several ways, you know. They flower, and the flower is pretty typical of an aeroid. They also set out some runners, um, and they're pretty easy to, to root here, but that pattern, you can't tell me. That's not a cool Diffenbachia. It's got those just barren white spots with a lighter mint green patches to it against a nice dark green, and then a really cool texture. So Diffenbachia has pretty pretty high amounts of um, uh, crystal oxalate or no sorry calcium oxalate crystals so they can make your hands itchy. Same thing with taro, kalo we call it here in Hawaii. Um, you can get and get itchy palms sometimes so just keep that in mind. Um, I kind of want to save this top dressing, so we'll just dump it out to the side. Why not? Now for the top dressing, it's just lava rock in the half inch size that I kind of graded myself. But this plant has needed to be repotted for a while. I'll show you some root porn here without breaking the plant. Look at that. Great roots, awesome roots. And so for most of my um, aeroids, I don't, uh, I won't break it down. Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. There's a bird nest fungus in my, in here. And I'm gonna take a picture with my phone so I can show you guys. 
Uh, right around here, maybe? But yeah, I'm gonna take a picture, and because uh, that is such a cool fungus. When I first came across this fungus, um, it, it was a, uh, there was a bunch of them. And they're called bird nest fungus because it looks like a cup, which would be the bird nest. And inside, it looks like there's structures that look like um, eggs or stones in this case, flat stones. And yeah, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Or you're looking at it already. So that's so cool. Okay, but yeah, like I was saying, I don't normally break it apart too much. I don't want to shock the roots on a lot of my aeroids. And so I won't. Okay, so if you notice, I'm going huge on it. And the reason is, is I don't have a pot that's slightly bigger than this, but the aeroid mix that I use is very well draining. Um, and because it's kept outside and it does rain often, I think the roots will infiltrate the rest of the soil really quickly. Um, so, yeah. That's what we're working with here. So let me fill this up and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we are also going to be putting in what was a top dressing in here of lava rock just to add some more porosity to this, some more grit. And then what I'll do is make a little hole like we're planting a tree put this guy inside it like that and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of slow release fertilizer and then I'm gonna to top it uh, again and I'll plant it to probably about maybe right in here you don't want to plant too far up on most plants um, but Diffenbachia for the most part, you can actually come up a little bit above the crown, as long as your mix is pretty porous. If that's the case, then a lot of roots will come out from the stem, from where you've put the soil, uh, at the soil line, and then infiltrate that new soil. So that's what you want. I'm gonna knock it around here a little bit. Put the rest of the mix in here, why not? It's mostly sand anyway. And I'll be right back with some more soil. Okay, so here's this soil. This is a kind of a mix of stuff. It has bark in it and perlite and rice husks in it. Um, I think that's just a little bit too low, so I'm gonna just shake it and kind of get the soil underneath it. But I think that will work out really well. And Let's see if I can back out even more. Nope. I'll get a shot of this in its new home. All right, guys, here we go. Um, I'll put the uh, Diffenbachia crocodile on the screen as well. But here we are. Um, we did a nice, good transplant. I talked quite a bit, and hopefully, you guys can give me some insight where you'd like to see the channel go as well. Like I said, at 200 subscribers, I will be doing a full tour of all my house plants which is kind of crazy um, and then we'll also like I said be doing a bunch of um, botanical garden tours uh, like a vlog style which will be my first vlog style which will be interesting um, but yeah so we have our totem pole we have Sully which is our um, Aquino cactus we have the Matucana which oh my gosh I can't tell you again just looking at it makes me happy we have our seven seedling grown or seed grown Echeverias I think they're Conte um, they were given to me as something else uh, but they grew out to be Conte which is or Echeverias which I'm totally cool with um, if you like what you see make sure to give a thumbs up it definitely helps out the channel make sure to subscribe i'm going to try to come at you with a ton of cool stuff you also see that i had a woodworking video recently go up uh, for mother's day uh, miss you mom every day um, and uh, yeah comment because i do read every comment and i do reply to every comment and i post mondays and fridays and we'll see you guys on the next adventure